A time before time. Um, yao, um. These are the glyphs in Kanai form that mean appeal to Shamash. Wisdom, advice, strength, all worlds, tranquility, counsel that would be upon earth. The only possible way of portraying non-linear events on a chronological scale is by moving back and forth, sewing loops in between the cosmic dew, until a general image may be grasped intuitively. This is one of such attempts, the infinite foundation of emptiness that is never nihilistic. God generated thus, I am the self-enclosed abyss that is infinite gesture of profundity. I hung in the voids among the uncosmic winds, suspended in infinity that would be full of terror if I would not be one with it, connected somehow with my carnal shell, the body. His counterpart, the goddess, speaks thus, gesture of silence. Oh, idea. I taught an M, the non-I, anatman, flowering from unconsciousness into emotion. Hush! Back into the world of phenomena. They are the Tao, nothing else, nothing more. The Atman and Anatman is perfectly at ease in the city of darkness, my consciousness infinite melting a single drop of boundless rest, crossed arms upon my chest. Rest worthy of a pharaoh. Whereupon they are mentioned, this and only this is meant. No human word of understanding will grasp, nay, yet children's stories may be profound beyond understanding. Confused, I began to write with seals on my hands. Mahi left his words in chalk, written in Hebrew, something other. That is a gift of writing, I thought, by a different tradition that tried to overtake me as soon as I emerged. Yet they were all splendid. Higher gods quickly rendered themselves to me and supported my weary mind and spine, not to buy in or be bought by a tradition that is foreign to them. Ante primordial world before the manifested universe, the timeless chasm. The goddess thus unveiled herself in the abyss and was born as Tiamat, whereupon she gave birth to Apsu reflecting upon the abyss, who was one with Ereb, the great dragon of time. Thus a triad between God, Goddess, and anterior God, Apsu, the son and father that begot Tiamat, and to whom she was a mother and daughter, established the Monad, as Ereb, and a triad that emanated in the neither no. That was the anteprimordial arrangement in which there was completeness, yet nothingness, before the great before. In the wastelands of the preformative world, this consciousness of I unwillingly encircled my consciousness as a mortal Arab, a son descending into chaos. It unveiled, called around my spirit, and we loved each other. The world carved me out, slayed me, took my parts and took it to all four corners of the universe. Then order slowly began to emerge. The infinite foundation of being that is not eternal. Then Purusha, spirit, a gem of being started with a gentle, humble light that began with the focus of post-primordial triad, becoming a force that with a great tremor among chaos and the abyss charged through emptiness. The consciousness of my light impregnated the darkness and liberated dark gods from the dead regions, their greater forms preserved in divine gold and silver light. Avila was a Preanuna god, of previous age, men of his blood fashioned. The spirit of his subverted the order and contacted the graveyards of some past universe. Tiamat was terrified, and she, withdrawn into the Prakriti, primordial matter, the mud, as a part of her was slain by the order-giving principle called Marduk, first among the Anuna gods, to give form to the world and become the first teletarch of the universe. Space was born in time. Tiamat became the chaotic raging fire attempting to consume what wounded her, that is all that sprang from the creative spirit. A little mortal, 
carving order for his insane mind, microverse in despair, hatred and pain, yet still repeating the world with his monkey mind? His strings pulled like a master of reality abused unwitting by many schemes and games. When she captured parts of his spirit, this spirit Purusha, by that of the cosmic mud, what arised from her was Atum, Anu, Enlil, Enki, the body of Axis Mundi, that ascended to the greater realms as the primordial image of the universe, establishing worlds. Then, as Brahma, upon the lotus pond, the child generated Tefnut, and Shu, the laws. Upon meeting the primal power, the mother of the stars was begotten amongst the precosmic world and she shone with her children as stars across the cosmic void. Rejoice in cosmos and towards the great gods and goddesses and providence. Salute the little child bathed in a chaos that to preserve the world need to chase away Tiamat's attempts. Wrote my will across the stars the resounding, greater ones, and within microcosms suspended upon the ash tree, like Woden, a small column drawn for a little world. All primordial archetypes are intersynchronistic through escalation and cascades as they manifest in all possible worlds, according to their continuous self-reference pointing towards themselves in all aspects within these worlds, according to the laws of the latter. Within codependent co-arising of an indivisible world, to understand the changes in the small world, one must aim his insight at understanding motions of powers and forces, metaphysical. Their laws and patterns then all becomes unveiled. Most confusion results from imploding symbolic threads, signifiers of forces and powers with fundamental narration of truth or belief. A being, a magician that is capable of living through resurgent atavisms back to the beginnings of its nascent consciousness, is capable of telling myth, when it has even a trace of understanding. This is a narrated example of the motion signs and signals evoked into a frail and often flawed understanding of a human mortal mind and heart. A magician reliving the generation and the unfolding rows of the universe of the anima mundi and it encloses the infinity within a single point and he becomes a little monad enclosed amongst the dragon of time thank you